Argentina has sworn in the right-wing economist Javier Millet as its new president. Millet has promised to drastically slash public spending. He's drawn comparisons with Donald Trump by vowing to, quote, make Argentina great again. But he takes office with the economy mired in its worst crisis in decades. Millet says his government will do everything possible to avoid hyperinflation. Supporters turned out in force for the inauguration ceremony in Buenos Aires. DW correspondent Alejandro Rebosio has more from there. Well, uh, here there was a lot of uh, people, thousands of people, uh, a lot of persons that come to celebrate uh, the new government. After um, the last uh, eight years, Argentina was uh, governed by uh, per uh, Peronism, the last 40 of these 80 years. And now the new government, the libertarian government, wants to go against Peronism, against the intervention of the state in the economy and uh, for free market. Uh, uh, there is a very strange change for uh, Argentina history, and here there was a lot of people celebrating with uh, the Argentine, Argentina's flags, with the national football team uh, shirts, the Messi's shirts. Uh, as uh, a year ago, they were celebrating the World Cup. Now they are celebrating the new government, at least the 55% of the population. Now, Millet has already promised a, a new era for Argentina. You touched upon a few things, but what's about to change? Yes, he has promised to make a huge uh, adjustment of public expenses as much as 5% of GDP. Uh, he says that the, the new, of course, he blames uh, to the inheritance of the last uh, government. Uh, he says that the, there is a big uh, risk of hyperinflation. He said that maybe in the, from December to February, there would be an inflation of 20 or uh, up to 40% uh, per month. But uh, so that's why he explained to the population that uh, the beginning of the government, of the government, will, uh, the people will suffer, will have to uh, adjust the state, uh, not the private sector, he says. But he says, but uh, of course, this uh, spending, cut spending will affect much uh, uh, part of the population because it will touch, uh, for example, the energy tariffs. Now, can we also expect any changes in Argentina, uh, Argentina's foreign policy? Yes, of course. Uh, he has uh, said that during all the, his campaign that he, his priorities will be to have uh, good relations with the United States, Israel and the free world. Uh, he, um, he will uh, freeze uh, the relations with uh, Brazil, uh, with uh, China. DW correspondent Alejandro Rebosio there reporting for Buenos Aires. And Argentina's new president is known for making controversial statements. But even before taking office, he's had to soften some of his more radical ideas. The lion, the wig, the madman. Javier Millet goes by many nicknames. A newer edition, the chainsaw president. During campaigning, the self-described anarcho-capitalist showed the public in no uncertain terms what he plans to do to public spending. Whoever comes to spend, I will cut their hand off. Argentina's new president is known for his harsh rhetoric. He's described Pope Francis, a fellow Argentine, as evil and nefarious and an imbecile who promotes communism. Malay stated bluntly that he wouldn't deal with communists in China or neighboring Brazil. Internationally, Malay has favored stronger ties with the United States and also Israel. But in a country struggling under the weight of triple-digit inflation, there's pressure to focus on issues back home. Apart from all the darkness of the situation, I want to tell you all that Argentina has a future. But not everyone is convinced. We hope Millet doesn't do what he says he will, because that would be a disaster. Many women are concerned, too. Millet is staunchly anti-abortion. I'm convinced that we have hard times ahead. For better or for worse, Millet has convinced the majority of the electorate that he is the one with solutions to Argentina's problems.
is going to change completely. It's something that many people wanted. Since his election victory, the man of many nicknames has invited the Pope, sent his foreign minister to Brazil and put his dollarization plan on the back burner. It's prompted a conservative newspaper to conclude the lion is no longer exclusively a carnivore.